Tonight my guest is T.B. Kovach. T.B., how are you? I'm fine, baby. Now you're, um, you're uh, living in Sweden, but yes. you're not Swedish. Where are you from? I'm from Romania. Okay. And yeah. you've been in Sweden how long? Oh, that's my 15th year, actually. So uh -huh. I, li I lived there a lot, you know. So you're pretty much Swedish now. Yeah, and I mean, you saw my girls, so I have two daughters that are Very pretty girls. Better, yeah, better Swedish than Romanian. <laughs> so, and they're Swedes. So what, I mean, they're blonde like me, so. They're blonde <laughs> like you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and what do you do? So I work as a trainer. I really love, you know, talking about technology. That's that's what I. That's what, what we're here for today. Yeah, to talking exactly. about technology. So I do a lot of I do a lot of training, and for the past year I start speaking at different conferences, you know, and uh, yeah, that that's mostly what I I mean. I my my day job is to train people, and it brings me the money, and then the conferences bring me the knowledge, you know, going uh -huh. and meeting a. Interesting people having interesting discussions. Like me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I was looking at you. <laughs> and uh, uh, you have an interest in uh, parallel computing. Yes. Let's talk a little about that. What first uh, defined parallel computing? Oh, that's a, that's a interesting. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the thing, if you look like how the world is, uh, I mean, how we did programming until now, we did everything sequential. We had only one single processor and uh, we did, you know, I mean, you had one stream of instructions and then you were expecting everything to be done in order or later on we added some threads, you know, to make it a bit uh, a bit more responsive, but the main reason we had threads was because the I.O. was the one holding our application uh -huh. and to fool the, 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 to fool the user, for instance, that you do several things at the same time, you just give it time slices on in, you know, in the same processor but the problem right now is that we have several cores in, in, in one computer mm -hmm. so stuff will happen actually real parallel so you don't have time slicing at the one processor you have two things happening at the same time so your inherently sequential programming is not it will not suffice in a, in, a, you know, in the near future so let me get this straight so if I have only one processor on my machine yeah. then this parallel computing is really a myth I'm not really doing things in parallel I'm creating two threads yes. but those threads only one of them is executing at exactly. a given time exactly okay but if I have two processors then yes. they each can be doing something at the same time exactly. if my program tells it to Exactly. So I have to know. I have to. My program has to be aware of two processes to be able to take advantage of that. Um, yes and no. I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, the, the, you know, in an ideal world, you will always know exactly how many processors you have okay. in your machine, and then you can actually, you know, do the application or make the application running the, uh, on, you know, on, on that amount of processors. But uh, as a programmer, maybe I got an eight eight core machine. Okay, I know I have eight processors, I will start programming for that. But what happens when I go to my client side or when someone will buy an application? They will have, you know, an old dual core machine. I mean, mm -hmm. dual core, it's a really old machine. I don't think you can find any single core chip anymore on the market today. Right. Even the Atom, if you look at the Atom, the Atom ones, you know, the, the, the smallest that you can get, the ARM actually are starting now to come as a dual core machine right. processor. So everything, it's, you know, it's dual core and above. Okay, so the part is I do have to make, uh, I can't count on a, a precise number of processors or no. precise number of cores, but I, I do need to uh, take into account that there will be more than one. <laughs> yeah, you need if to. I, if yeah. I want to, uh, my applications to run uh, faster. Yes, that's, I mean, a couple of years ago, Herb Sutter said the, the, the free lunch is over, and what he was implying, and what he is implying actually, is that, you know, until now we could live uh, our lives as a programmer, it's very easy. We can just program the way we do, more or less, you know, without taking any responsibilities for the way we are writing code, and just expect the hardware manufacturer to deliver faster computers. Yeah. Because of the Moore law, you know, I, I mean, you get the twice the amount of transistors, uh, somewhere between one, one and two years, you know, twice mm -hmm. the amount of transistors on the same surface, on the same chip, and as a corollary of this law, you get um, uh, double uh, double the speed was right. one of the one of the improved double the speed every eighteen months or so That's yeah more slow, yep. exactly I mean he never talked about the speed he right. just spoke about the number of transistors but you know the result of that one of the results or uh, was was this one I think in two thousand and four or two thousand and five they reach a plateau of about four gigabytes mm -hmm. four four gigahertz on on the processor 
So faster than that, if you, I mean, you could go in theory up till 13, I think, they, they, they succeed in doing that. But uh, the, the heat dissipation is so, so big that you need a very big cooling system to do that. So, uh, so it's the, more practical to now start focusing on multiple cores exactly. and on more transistors. To make we got, oh no, we still get more transistors, but instead of having a faster processor, we, we have a, you know, a slower processor, or as fast as it was a couple of years ago, but we have the, the double am the amount of processors. Okay. So, uh, right now, I mean, a, re a normal computer, I mean, the, if you look at what Intel is coming with, and uh, AMD, I mean, they are, they are doing the same kind of thing. If you look at, at Intel, at the core uh, processors, a core i3 or a core i5 are both of them built with a dual core plus hyperthreading. So hyperthreading is the same uh, is the same processor, but you have two pipelines for instructions. Mm. So you do you could actually run at the same time in the same processor with the help of hyperthreading uh, two threads. In theory, it's mm. much easier to switch context when you have the pipelines. All the instructions are there are aligned, so they they just switch that. So. By doing by doing that, you get the impression that you run with eight cores or four cores if you take the core i3. If you take the core i7, you will have you know eight processors in your or it looks like you have eight processors in your machine. Uh, the server on the server side already, I think they're already up up their processors with uh, sixteen core. Yeah. And there were discussions that uh, Intel is working in some kind of. Uh, uh, Test processor with 320 cores or 320 hardware threads. There were something like 80 cores for and four hyper threads per core. Soon that will be my phone. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it is soon, like five, ten years from now, we can see that as a normal processor in, in your phone. Right. If you look at your app, if I look at my application that I wrote in you know, 96 when I left Romania, my computer was a 286, you know, uh, 10 megahertz. Processor, you know, oh, it was a dream machine in those days. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. and I uh, know we had like uh, ten machines like that, hardwareless, and we had one server, three eighty six, and sixteen megahertz. It was you know fastest machine that you could get ninety two, and we were working with the same machine up up to ninety six. Uh, ten megahertz. I mean, now I have in my, my the last computer, the fastest computer is one I bought in two thousand and four. It's like three point two. Gigahertz or two, 2005, I don't remember exactly what. Uh, so it's like 3,000, no, 320 times faster. Right. And it was, you know, only a period of 10 years. So the same application in theory that I, I could run in, uh, in 1996 in, in, in my uh, university machine would have run 320 times faster on my. Uh, That's free lunch. Yeah, free lunch. that was free lunch. Let, let's talk about um, from a program. Programmer's perspective, yeah. particularly a .NET programmer. Yeah. What do I need to do to take advantage of multiple cores so that my application will start running faster? So the first thing to do is to start thinking differently. You know, I mean, it's not it's not really. I mean, it's not really the same kind of thinking that okay, we need to to have one stream of instructions and one data. You need to think about your application a bit better. You need to understand the problem a bit better because most of the time you have you know in you have latent parallelism in your application, something that you just need to, to discover. And the best way to do it is to understand the problem. If you understand the problem, you'll understand exactly which things could be done at the same time. When, where do you have the dependencies, where the things are different, and how can you, how can you actually work with that? So, so uh, the, the easiest example, for instance, it's a for loop. Mm -hmm. so, I know that I have a for loop, and the, the easiest way for you to actually start using parallelism is instead of writing for, um, you know, from uh, for i and yeah, whatever. How do you do a for? You will write parallel dot for. Parallel being a class, you know, part of the task parallel library, and okay. it has it has a method that it's called for. And if you look at the way, I mean, it it takes a uh, it takes an iterator, uh, iterator, and or it takes a variable that you'll use, and you'll have an action. So you could use very nicely with lambda expressions. It will look almost the same like a for loop, and, mm -hmm. but it does that on in, in parallel. You know, mm. the thing is that you need to understand. I mean, it is not that every single for loop that you have you can just put in there parallel dot for and you, you solve the problem and now you have a parallel application because that's not the case. So 
if I want, I, what I actually, you know, one of my talks is patterns for parallel computing, and there I show just to be able to exemplify the way to think, you know, in parallel computing, I, I show how you can do, a, you know, a, a recipe, how can you cook something. Mm -hmm. And then looking at different steps. So, of course, when you think like that, ah, but I have 20 steps, let's do all at the same, well, all, all the steps at the same time. It doesn't work doesn't that, work way. that way. You may have to, you have to mix the ingredients before you yeah. cook exactly. the ingredients. Exactly, before I cook them. And I need to cut, for instance, I need to, to peel, the, peel the, the onion right. before I cut them and stuff right. like that. So, uh, I have some dependencies. So, you need to understand your problem, you need to decompose your problem in such a way that you could actually, you know, you could use stuff in parallel. And normally if you look, there are two kinds of parallelism that you will get. It's either a task parallelism, meaning that you have two methods that could be run at the same time, you know, that's, or you, you are looking at the methods and how you can arrange them, and you have a data parallelism. So the data you have actually could be done in parallel. You could have islands of data or whatever, you know, or you could have like pipelining and stuff like that. You still work on the data, but the data, you know, it's it's like moving you're moving to different steps and you have different chunks of data doing mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. So as a .NET programmer, if you look at that, what you get it's a very uh, you know very easy way to start using parallelism. Parallel dot four, as I said, it's part of the task parallel library. This class is built on top of, uh, of another class called task. Task is an abstraction, it's not a thread, it's an abstraction, it's you know, a, a unit of work, an asynchronous work that you want to run in your application. It's something, you know, so it's not, uh, eventually will be run by a thread, of course. But what they did, they abstract away the number, of course, you don't need to know that. Oh, so if you, have, if you have 10 cores on your machine, you'll get 10 different queues. Oh, and okay. the tasks will actually get you know get placed in different queues and they'll be run from there. There is no need for me actually to have more than 10 threads on my machine. If I can give them something to do, that's enough. So right. my task will be actually my unit of work, my, my things that they will need to, to, to be doing. Okay. And on top of that, they built uh, down the, the parallel link so you got the yeah, you know sure. so you get you get you know you just write as parallel and you got it I call it blink instead of blink you know because if you blink when I when <laughs> I show the demonstration you you miss the whole point you just that dot as parallel you know and you, you got it <laughs> so um, it it and it works actually very it's it, an extension method. Uh, yes, exactly. But but the thing is that it, it uses a lot of uh, of heuristics, you know, and a lot of stuff. So the, there, I mean, I tried to see what's the overhead, for instance, if I use parallel programming and I have only one processor mm -hmm. on my machine, and if I'm not using, I think I get you know a, a performance uh, decrease by a couple of percents, like three five percent. Okay. So it's doing all that task the, stuff, the abstraction the, layer. Takes away a little bit if you're not if you don't have an extra processor. Exactly. But if you do have an extra processor, then you could get double. Exactly. Double is the. the, the I mean, there is a guy called Amdal, and he had you know something called Amdal's law. He came out with it like '67. Mm -hmm. And what the guy said was, you know, if you look at your application, it might not be worth parallelizing it, mm -hmm. for a single single reason. Your sequential part will be the one dictating how much improvement or how fast your application oh, will that's go. The bottom, Mike, right? So if you have like ten percent of your application in sequential, it might sound you know a little. Well, the problem is that with ten percent, it means that your application can be at maximum ten times faster. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you had an infinite number of processors, you know you could run everything. The parallel stuff would be. Close to zero, but the sequential part will mean that you can get maximum ten, 10 times the the improvement. He said that sixty seven, and it was you know a, a, a lethargy in the, in this area. No research was done, and the industry was moving away because they thought that's not something we would like to do. Mm. Uh, Twenty years later, another guy, John Gustafson, came along and he looked at that and he said, you know what, he might be right. But the problem is that, you know, some problems, even though the sequential part is quite big, if you run them in a, you know, uh, if they become, they become bigger, it's actually worth parallelizing them. So instead of trying to solve the same kind of thing in the same amount of time, you will actually solve, you know, a bigger problem in the same amount of time, you know, I mean, 
instead of I, I will uh, and I use I use another another example is like if I want to cook some something with my wife, you know, uh, I have two options. Uh, the, the first option, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I'm looking at what what do I need to do. So the first is to buy the stuff, then it's to prepare the food, and the third one is to cook it. You know, so those are sequential steps, right? There. Exactly. So those are my three steps. And looking at those three steps, I realize that okay, buying the stuff. If I ask her for it, it will take like double the time because we will buy all other, you know, the whole shop. It's not it's not really parallelizing. It will it will imped impediment. Me. So that's not the thing. The second one. But, you know, help, getting help with that. I mean, if we divide the work in two, it will take half the time. Okay. Then the third one, cooking. I cannot, I cannot, you know, influence the cooking time. It, it needs to cook as much as it, as it did before. Right. Well, if you have uh, a sauce and a uh, yeah uh, meat, they yeah. could cook in parallel. But still, I mean, I uh, yeah, and she could help me with that. And uh, yeah, we could, but. Let's say I don't have any sauce. I don't no. have anything. I have I have a simple a simple dish. Right. You know? So you've got one of the three steps, which can be was a parallel parallelization. Exactly. And of, if those two are like five percent each, mm -hmm. when you parallelize the, the rest of it, you still get you know like 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 this one. It's it's half, but you still don't get you know the the real parallelization. You don't get the gain that you are out. Uh, you know. I mean, if I invest in a, in two processors, I want to have something double as fast, fast. You know. Right. That that that's the 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 main idea. But now let's put the problem a, a bit different. I know that it takes me that long to cook something for me and my wife. You know. But what if we get have guests? We need to cook for four people. And if she will help me, I mean, alone it will take that long. If we are two and we cook for four people, it will take almost the same time. Mm -hmm. So we did more work in the same time unit instead of, you know, doing s the same amount of work like we did before in half the time. Mm -hmm. So the, the size of the problem will actually uh, will be the driving factor. Ah. And if you look at, you know, I mean, if you look at today's technology, everything is becoming bigger and bigger by the by, yeah, by the day or by the time. Right. I mean, <laughs> my application from 10 years or 15 years ago will not be 320 times faster because I have windows on my machine that will take like 80% of my resources. So in, in reality, my application might be 10 times faster, you know. Right. <laughs> so that's, that, that's a bit of a point. Okay. Anything else? I don't know. As I said, I think we should start taking responsibility as as programmers. We need to understand our problem, or, you know, what what we are trying to solve, because that's the way you you will have to go. I agree. TV, thank you very much. Thank Great you. Great conversation. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.